Well, hello, ladies. Simone here, Director of Program Growth with Endow, of course, and I'm here with Amelia Chorney. Welcome, Amelia. Hi, Simone. It's so good to be here. It's so lovely to have you on the Endow podcast. And uh, just to, to briefly, um, Amelia is the National Manager of the Seton Teaching Fellows and Formation, which I was involved with earlier this year. Amelia, when you uh, found me to collaborate with you on introducing Father Giustani's The Risk of Education to all these awesome teachers. So I had a really great time doing that. And Amelia is also a Given alum from 2018. So from pre-pandemic days, we love the Given Form and Institute here at Endow. And there's so many wonderful things about Amelia. So Amelia, do you want to briefly introduce yourself before we get started on why we're doing this podcast together? Yes. Thank you, Simone, for having me. Um, yes, I literally found Simone in the corner of the internet in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and interestingly related to our like person of the day, um, I was reading her her bio and something about it provoked in me this uh, suggestion or thought that she might be related to the charism of Father Gisani. Um, related to that <laughs> and why I'm looking around the internet for people <laughs> to do formation is um, yeah, like someone said, I'm the manager of formation and community for this amazing missionary program called CE Teaching Fellows. Um, I'm currently here based in the Bronx or Manhattan. I have a wonderful four and a half month old daughter named Ellie and uh, a husband, and I'm just blessed with those two. Um, other things about me, I was also an alum of the CE Teaching Fellows program. I was a former teacher for a couple of years before I transitioned into this administrator role and right now please pray for me everyone out there uh, to finish my master's thesis um, on uh, the educational philosophy of Catholic worker movement and specifically like Dorothy Day and Peter Morin so um, I'm actually attending tomorrow for the Immaculate Conception the Archdiocese is having a mass that is closing the canonization phase in the diocese for her um, sending her off to other ecclesial authorities from New York. So, oh, so uh, just, exciting. yeah, praying for that special intercession as well. She, yeah. Amelia, that's, that's, about that's, me. That is beautiful. We just, I don't know if you know this, but we just released our latest studies on Catholic social teaching. So of course, oh, amazing. talk yeah. about Dorothy Day. And I'm a little bit jealous right now of where you're living intellectually uh, in terms of <laughs> And, you know, I think it's, it's so, it's so important. She's so amazing. Um, yeah, good for you. I thank you. want to, maybe we'll have to have another podcast <laughs> your brain yeah. on your Morin and Dorothy Day. And it, it just seems to be where the Holy Spirit is breathing these days. And mm. um, I'm very pleased that you found me randomly on the internet and that you can sniff out a charism. That's, <laughs> that's very impressive. That's very impressive. <laughs> I also think, so this, this uh, podcast will obviously be released in 2022, but we're recording it and I don't think we planned it. We didn't plan it this way, but it's just, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of obsessed with uh, recognizing God winks when they happen, but this is the Feast mm -hmm. of St. Ambrose mm -hmm. and um, Father Giussani, whose text we're going to be talking about is actually a priest of Milan. And so mm -hmm. he is, he's Ambrosian right. Not many people know there's yeah. actually a, a Latin right. I'm sorry, a mm. Western rite that is not mm. just Latin rite, but actually Ambrosian rite from mm. the Diocese of Milan. So we owe a lot to St. Ambrose, converted St. Augustine, or at least was the final mm. straw in the conversion of St. Augustine, who, you know, obviously we're talking about education and Western civilization here. So this is mm. a, big, a big day today. So I think it's just oh so delightful to, to be talking about educational pedagogy on um a saint on a saint's feast day who influenced so much you so on the endowed podcast one of our you know one of my goals for 2022 is really to talk mm -hmm. to people who whose lives were transformed by the mm -hmm. writings of the saints and church documents so this is a, mm -hmm. a slight departure because Jusani's you know cause is up but he's not exactly mm -hmm. a can i think yet yeah. So I'm yes. being really mm -hmm. liberal right now and going a little mm -hmm. bit off of my very strict rule. But I suppose if I, if, yeah. if I made the rule, I can break the rule or at least bend mm -hmm. the rule. And so how did you first encounter Giussani uh, and his classic text? I think every educator yeah. should read The Risk of Education. Yeah. Wow. Okay. This will bring a lot of consolation to me to like remember this. And he talks about memory a lot, actually, as like a way to again, re relive or to like, 
return to back to that call, the initial call of Christ or that encounter that you have with him. So I was actually, it was during my missionary year as a CE teaching fellow. Um, I was a, an assistant teacher as, as part of my role or apostolate. Um, and it was, it was grinding. <laughs> I, was, I was, you know, this like naive, like fresh out of undergrad, like fire on fire for my faith, but really didn't have a lot of human formation or virtue built in place to kind of sustain and the hope it takes to teach every day. Um, and I was, um, you know, in my pride, I was like, oh, I studied engineering in college. They're going to put me with middle schoolers so I can teach like, you know, algebra. Mm -hmm. I got placed with first grade. And um, I was so shocked, disappointed, and like a little bit let down. I was like, this is not what I want. I I'm not comfortable with teaching, you know, these kind of subjects to children who are just really like get making sense of the world for the first time, like language, math, just like how does, you know, Oh, a little metaphysical in a way. Like, oh, what is a number? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, I don't want to be a philosopher first. No, I, I yeah. really did. I, I don't, I didn't, I know. So um, my, one of my supervisors actually was, was involved, was a regular attendee of school community in New York. Um, and she was involved in the, like, life of um, the, the movement that Father Giussani founded. It's uh, called Communion Liberation. It's a lay ecclesial movement. Um, and she gave me uh, a book that she thought might be helpful for our just like larger formation as teachers. I had, I, first of all, I knew nothing about CL, Communion Liberation. I knew nothing about Jusani, and I didn't know that education was really part of like the founding kind of story that led to their like educative charism, if I can use that right. phrase. It is an education, um, the charism is education to Christian maturity. Yes. So can I just add a quick pause? Oh, of course, the yeah. The relevance of this podcast is because at Endow, we are releasing very soon mm. studies for high school girls oh amazing right? amazing we're so excited yeah. about it we, it's just we're really we're so excited there is a certain approach to education a certain approach to high school a certain approach to first grade that mm. is and i think the, the charism of Jusani, the charism that has expressed itself in this ecclesial movement as you mentioned that could be valuable uh, mm -hmm. Not just for teachers, but for ministers and campus ministers and youth ministers, yeah. any moms, dad, anybody who is in the business of educating, um, mm -hmm. particularly high school students. So that that's why I had this idea, Amelia. I thought, oh, you yeah. know what? I would love to talk to Amelia, a given girl, an endowed girl, a Catholic girl who who, yeah. who who's been who's been transformed by this by Jusani to talk about this as we are in the process of yeah. releasing these high school studies. So, just wanted to. Connect no, that is back to you. <laughs> fortuitous and much needed. I think Christian, I mean, that's a larger question, but I, I don't know. That's been, I, like you said, the movement of the Holy Spirit. I think that's being asked of every young person right now <laughs> is, um, you know, what does my like flourishing and maturity look like in, you know, just in like, yeah, how the church, the movement of the church or the growth of the church. Um, but so I, part of my own personal call was like doing this missionary year to be like okay like I want to mature put yeah. me in the fire <laughs> right, um, right so I got this book called Disarming Beauty and it's basically um an, uh, Father Curran Julian Curran who was the previous president of Communion Liberation um his rendition of the religious sense which is kind of Gisani's um I guess like if you say like his flag. canon, yeah. flagship yeah. text yeah. on the, the really the educative proposal of, of his charism. Um, so I was like, oh, this is a nice free book. What do I do with a free book? I start reading it. I was hooked. Like, mm -hmm. I just, it, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I never heard someone talk about faith in a way, it, I would say now looking back, like in a way that spoke to the challenges of like post-modernity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But we're like really authentic and true to my heart. And then also like, for evangelization. Like I was a missionary and I was here um, to make relationships with my coworkers, with my colleagues, with my community members, with these students and these families. And it just felt like to me, there were so many chasms of difference between us. Right. And I just didn't know, like everything that I had learned and all that was good and beautiful about what I learned about traditional, I, I don't even know if I should use that word, about previous catechetical methods that I inherited from my own catechesis, like apologetics, mm -hmm. um, or just like, you know, te teaching the, teaching the faith in a very, um, I would say like under, under the understanding of common truths, right? Like yes. a, 
right? A human person is, is invaluable. Their dignity is made in the image likeness of God. There is a right and wrong, just like kind of common truth, truths. Um, those no longer, no longer held up in the environment I was. I mean, right. I was talking to people who, um, yeah, experienced so much in their life that just seemed to me at odds with this, these previous educational methods that I had learned. Right, um, right. And, right. and it, 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 not that they were, they were wonderful, but it just didn't fit to where I was, my present experience. Yep. But reading Disarming Beauty, I was, um, I was just like, oh my goodness, like this person, um, part of the book, Father Huli, and it responds to letters from young people in the, in the movement that they submit to him on mm-hmm. like their present experiences. And a couple of them were so striking. And at this time too, I was like discerning um, engagement with my, my boyfriend, now husband at the time. And just the way that they spoke about like this desire to really figure out like, what is at the heart of their vocation? Is this person really going to fulfill me? Mm -hmm. How do I actually sustain a relationship with this person when I'm being pulled in 5 million directions? Mm -hmm. How does Jesus fit into this? Mm -hmm. And basically it was like kind of like facing and examining your heart in a really intense way um, and trying to figure out like how to live in a free way with this person that you were going to marry, this particular letter, Um, not to get like bogged down by everyday life and overwhelmed by everyday life. And then also like, how does Jesus actually like spur that desire or like sustain that desire to love? Yes. Um, Yes. And this letter kind of just, yeah, like I was like, okay. And I thought Father Karan was Jasani. <laughs> I didn't know that this was based off of the right, right. That his, his synthesis is Jasani. <laughs> so backtracking a little bit. So yeah. things that you said that are so crucial and so interesting and so relevant and why I really wanted to do this podcast is yeah. when you said that, that, that this cares and responds to post-modernity that's such a lofty claim. I think it's a true claim. What it means is to just play on a little bit of what you said is that all those kind of assumptions of a Christian culture, all those assumptions that there is objective truth, all those assumptions that everybody's on the same page about the things that you take for granted as a person of faith, they're no longer there. Mm -hmm. So what, what I'm picking up from what you said is to confront someone who's engaging these ideas in a practical way, right? You're mm-hmm. not, not, this is not an intellectual who's like mm-hmm. in a corner somewhere kind of engaging these ideas. Mm-hmm. We typically don't have access to those conversations that are going on. But somebody who has taken kind of a lot of those lofty conversations and have said, let us begin very humbly with the human person mm-hmm. and the human person's happiness, which is how it relates to like your own, like, you know, state in life. Should I marry this person? Yeah. What will they fulfill? Yeah. Where does Jesus fit into all this? And to take the human person and happiness seriously, uh, because mm-hmm. now that is now the starting word, starting point mm-hmm. in a post enlightened world is me and yeah. my happiness, right? Mm-hmm. This is yeah. my space slash Instagram slash Facebook slash yes. <laughs> culture. Yes. And so we have yes. to begin with where the culture is. And I mm-hmm. find it so interesting that Jusani himself, brilliant, obviously a genius and a brilliant man, instead of going off into academia, although, you know, he did actually pursue a lot of studies, of course, Mm -hmm. but was in high school, was teaching high school, and it was in in the classroom with these students, Mm -hmm. where he had this experience and this intuition Mm -hmm. that hold on the assumptions that they had, they no longer have, that I grew up Mm -hmm. with, and the experience of church and the experience of Jesus that I Mm have, the beauty that I've encountered, Mm -hmm they have not encountered or experienced him in the same way. And I want to desperately transmit that. How do I do that? Well, first Mm -hmm. I have to begin by taking a look and paying attention who they are, what their questions are and beginning with them. And I think that's the genius of it. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, related to my own teaching, sorry, like primary teaching experience. So after reading that book, I like went to school community that I finally learned that, oh, sorry. (laughs) this other person who yeah. has passed on this tradition and it was really a question of me of like do I see Christ in my life um, because at this point in the year I was failing miserably as a teacher mm-hmm. I could not reconcile the suffering of my students and my own suffering and you know I, I'm sure you you can mention this as well as a teacher and I don't, like, don't want to make assumptions but like it's almost like in the classroom it's this little school of the family in a different way where like your humanity comes out their humanity comes out and they're just like you like realize like oh I'm a wounded fallen person um yeah. and I just couldn't I yeah. never experienced that before and that sense of responsibility or this awareness of my neediness 
to be loved constantly by Christ. And I was just like grasping for his love. Yeah. Yes. But everything that I turned to could not answer the fact that like, I was called to love these children and my colleagues, but I also needed that like love and return from Christ. So like, where was I going to find that? Um, and as I went to school community, um, Giustani's proposal of like obedience, that was what <laughs> changed me as a teacher. It was this, I, this, this, this like, yeah, his, his teaching, I was going to use the word idea, but that's the wrong word. His teaching of obedience mm-hmm. to be in, in the present, mm-hmm. um, in, in the presence of another that points me towards Christ and my desire for Christ um, was what sustained me in my first year teaching. As soon as I said, yes, the, 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 the people that are given to me, my students that are given to me, the reality of, of the day that is given to me, I am going to take that by the reins that yeah. is God <laughs> and as soon as I did yeah. that as soon as I was like no no Christ has called me in this particular um to show me my desire here my desire can be fulfilled now by him mm-hmm. um completely changed my colleague relationships it changed the way I saw my students and I just became more free to be yeah bold and asking Christ like show me like how I'm loved in this moment like yeah. in these circumstances, because I had understood that, right? If I, if I don't share these truths, these people, if I don't share this history or this faith, like I can't find that happiness. Um, I can't find that community. I will not be fulfilled. And that was a total lie for the devil. Um, and that's just like what inspired me to stay in teaching because I saw like the impossible, if I can use that word, happen. Yeah. Like I would have, the way that I put it to some of our you know new fellows or or uh, college graduates who are considering doing teaching or any sort of missionary program is like, I would have never chosen to be with these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, would never, I was on a college campus and it was orientation week. I would have never chosen to work with these people out of my own free will, out yeah. of my own pre- preference. And like once that was taken away and I was obedient to what God had given me, it just like really like I just, there was like healing there was freedom and there was love that I thought was impossible I mean I literally became friends with people who I thought I would never become friends with (laughs) and it just like so that's basically how I how I met Jusani and how um yeah the risk of education applied to me how you live and how you teach Mm -hmm. and how you approach yeah for me the experience was very similar first I wasn't evangelized the gospel before I had met CL people so I had you know, as Jusani says, our, um, our faith is reduced uh, into like two, two extremes, moralism on the one hand, sentimentality on the other. I think I was a moralist who actually loved Jesus. So it's complicated when, mm. I, when I first met CL, but mm. well, when I met the charism of Jusani, it was first an evangelical moment for me to take my heart, mm. my needs, my happiness seriously for people who cared about my life in a way that I hadn't encountered before. That was one. At that time, when I had met, met um, those friends, those people, I, had, I, was in, I was doing marketing and theater. I, I wasn't mm. at all in, in um, education and theology mm. and any of that. Um, not, not, not even on the horizon. I mean, it was just mm. not even in my psyche. Um, so I think it's very, very funny that, um, you know, when I was grateful, I should say that I encountered Jusani before I entered, um, the field Mm. that I'm in now because I was able to approach it with that lens of Mm. total paradigm shift that I'm as a teacher or educator, whatever, I'm Mm. not here to just give you something apart Mm. from giving you myself. Mm. And I think that's really the shift. Um, mm. I'm a fellow pilgrim on this mm. earth. I am yep. accompanying you in this. And I think what you said was very brilliant about like, I need love too. I need Christ too, because there is nothing that is the most radical daily examination of conscience than being in front of students or who, mm. who will judge you, criticize you, look to you for love, ha- have needs that you cannot fill that you cannot mm. answer. And so there's nowhere else to turn but Jesus. And I had, I remember this experience where I, I had a, I had a, a class after lunch class full of the whole football team. Okay. Mm. And I mean, there's nothing more brutal than that. It's not like they were like, Oh, we can't wait yeah. to learn theology, you yeah. know? And, and I remember, I remember Jusani and him saying, you take your own needs seriously. And just that, that grace, that awareness 
that crisis present here and now, as you say, and what is the best way to respond to it? First, having an affection for myself in front mm -hmm. of these souls, in front of these children who are made in the image and likeness of God. I changed just the way that mm. I was there in the classroom mm. changed and yeah. then changed because of that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I found that actually, like you say, an impossible, an impossible yet it happened. Mm. It happened to reality. Um, now translating this a little bit to, um, how does one, you know, for, for, for the women who are listening to us and they're like, okay, so we're, we're, we're moms of high school girls. Mm -hmm. We're going to use these yeah. high school yeah. texts. What does this mean for us? Or what does mm -hmm. it mean for the minister who's going to use these endowed books um, yeah. to accompany these high school girls who may want to be there, you know, who, mm -hmm. who might be interested in talking about yeah. their dignity, about their personal vocation, yeah. about their mission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't wait to talk about it. There are many girls like that, you know, mm -hmm. and then there are others who are going to be kind of forced mm -hmm. into it, if you will, yeah. they don't want to be there, but they're going to get yeah. sent there anyway. Amelia, yeah. what, can you, what can you say about the value of charism oh. in terms of like the endowed groups, high school endowed groups that mm -hmm. might form? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and I, you're the theologian, so I'm going to say this wrong, but it, I think also like what you said about taking your own needs seriously, like taking our humanity seriously. I think oftentimes we like to lie to ourselves. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Beauty doesn't matter. Like culture doesn't matter. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Our fleshliness doesn't matter. And we can kind of live in these drifting souls. And But that's not the incarnation. Um, and I think that's something else I learned about Dusani's like specific educational method is like to see my students as, as like, yes, incarnate, incarnate beings. Um, and therefore, like, I have to really like take that with a grain of salt one and also like very seriously and I can give a very practical example I mean this just happened yesterday we had our first mass um, with some of our catechesis students um, and this is honestly some of the first times they've gone to mass in over two years for some of these students who are not you know born in, in, in Christian families or any or religious families um, and they're part of our after school program and I you know I was there just to volunteer to chaperone and I'm sitting in this pew with you know three second graders who obviously are, are very interested in the fact that one of them has gloves that are fingerless. And you're just like, <laughs> just like sucked in, you know, gloves, hats, uh, the, 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 you know, the pew rocks, you know, like just right. like very sensory fleshly things that I'm just like, oh, like, so like, come on, Jesus is here. Like, you know, my lofty teacher, yeah. like the Eucharist is the liturgy and they're just fascinated with the fact that they're not in school, they're in a different place, <laughs> you know. Yes, there's there's squares that are different colors on the floor. <laughs> um, so, so and and, the, and it's you know in a sense like the proposal there is like okay well they have this need to be engaged they have this need they they have this wonder they have this desire to to live you know like, to right. themselves they loves. yeah yeah they want to be uh, seen they want to be attended to and, and they want their desires to be recognized. So, you know, I did my best to kind of quietly redirect them and redirect them. And, you know, it was so interesting. And I, and I decided, I was like, okay, you know what? If I push too hard, Amelia, you're going to miss the like ebb and flow of their desire. Right. You're going to miss the yeah. fact that they could even have a possibility of paying attention. Beautiful. And that to me is like recognizing, you know, their need of it, not their their own, not um, their expression of their own freedom, right? Yes. And that yes. is, they have a heart. And yeah. so like, there was this one moment where I, I redirected them a bunch, tapping them on the shoulder and giving this like stern glare, and, like putting that like parent arm, you know, across the pew yeah. where it's like, you yeah. can feel authoritative presence behind you. Yes. So don't do something crazy. Um, and yes, you know, one of our students turns to me and says, what's a jackal? And I'm like, what do you mean? And I was like, oh my gosh, she was listening to the Old Testament reading. So we're talking uh, about jackals. He's like, yeah. what's a jackal? And I was like, oh Lord, like I was humbled. I was like, oh, like, yes, like this child, you know, the Holy Spirit is here. They're working. Yeah. And I, and of course I was, oh, and I tried to explain and he was like, oh, okay, you know, and then the next 20 minutes he was not paying attention. Then comes the Eucharist. And all of a sudden he's like, I thought there was blood too. And I was like, you're, you're right. It, it just yeah. hasn't happened yet. And, you know, it was like one of those moments where I was like, okay, like as a teacher, like how can I constantly like have this awareness of who I am and who they are? Yes. And how can I have that freedom to, you know, and, and if I can use like a pedagogical term, 
give up, allow for shared control, which is yeah. something that we teach our teachers. Right. Shared control to express their freedom and my freedom and having those boundaries where we can kind of let our desires, you know, interact, if that makes sense. Like, give, like I'm going to actually let him talk to me during mass, um, an expression of his desire within this boundary that it is, it is about, about what's happening. Right. And that's, that's where, that's where, ed, that's where educating, teaching, forming, leading these groups, it becomes, first of all, it becomes interesting mm -hmm. for you and yes. them. And two, mm -hmm. it's relation, it's relational. Mm -hmm. So it's not just babysitting with indoctrination or discipline yeah. with indoctrination, but there's a dynamic, there's a dynamism mm -hmm. to the educational mm -hmm. experience that is there only with this awareness yes. of who you are and who they are and what is happening. And I really love your point about the Holy Spirit because it becomes, an, it becomes masterful, right? Mm -hmm. it becomes, it, and that's why teaching is so exhausting. People think it's like the hours and the grading. It's actually, I think, more the emotional intelligence of paying mm -hmm. attention to what is happening here and now in you, in them, and, and the, the, the shared relationship. So yeah. I love that. And I think, I think for any person who's in an educative position, it's really, yeah, just like being constantly aware that you are not ultimately responsible for that work. And yeah. like, and where's the direction of, of yeah. your freedom and the other of the students freedom going like yep. God. And I think that was so reassuring because I'm also like a, I'm a, I'm a recovering legalist. If I can say that recovering yeah, moralist, I'm, yeah, I'm like <laughs> very, very <laughs> fragile, recovering, yes. control yes. freak, legalist. And yeah. Something right that was so comforting and challenging from Jusani was like, no, 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 the heart is made for God. Yeah, like, you don't have we, to worry as, as much. You can worry a yes. little. Yes, you don't have to worry as. Yes. Much. Yeah, that's yes, that's, and that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, and I was like, and it's been true. Like, and uh, you know, and to to like invite the Holy Spirit to really be like, oh yeah, uh, yes, like okay, if their hearts are are designed literally for God, like how can I actually respond to what they want, which is like love, attention, and a lot of our students like it's it's just attention. They. And it's crazy because like you, you, you write it off as immaturity, which it is, but that's not responsible or appropriate in this setting. And I think that's where the awareness comes in is like, okay, like, are you taking that seriously? Um, in a sense of like yeah, their taking need. that, yeah, their, their, their need and that responsibility to respond to that. Um, whatever, you know, you think is right. Like you said, the indoctrination or like, okay, if they were silent for the whole mass, Perhaps that would have been better, but I would have missed on two conversations where I actually showed this, the student that I was interested in their experience in their of mass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's where, at least, you know, if we're talking about endowed groups, it's very different. We don't have like mm -hmm. school measurements the way that right. like, yes. schools yeah. do that want to see the mm -hmm. SAT scores or want to mm -hmm. see the grades. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's very difficult to measure and, and why theology is the queen of the sciences, if, if we're talking mm -hmm. about theology, we're talking about anything, we can talk yes. about algebra, mm -hmm. right, is the, the, the measure, the criteria for success in a sense is, are they open? Are they on a journey? Are they mm -hmm. continually asking that question? Are they in wonder? Are they taking what you're proposing seriously? Has it become a problem, as Yusani would say, a provocation, mm -hmm. a good problem, something that they want mm -hmm. to unravel? That to me is success, mm -hmm. not whether they always have the right answers, not whether they even have come to believe in the confession that we want them to believe. Yes, I want them to believe mm -hmm. in the apostles creed with all their heart, mind, mm -hmm. soul, and strength, and I want yes. them martyrs yeah. for it. But is the, the success, if you will, I hate that word sometimes, is mm -hmm. have they started to, to adopt what, and take seriously what it is that you're proposing, right? Because I think at least the, the, the anxiety, if you will, of the feminine genius is like, I gotta get them to a certain point and yeah. it's my yeah. time and it's my, but am I, have they seen that I'm proposing something that I first myself am living and believing and that I'm willing to risk and accompany them mm -hmm. in? Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think that was also the genius of Jusani because I, I, I don't think I, we've shared this story yet, but you know, going, much, much like us, like you're so relatable mm -hmm. for all these ideals. You're going to go into the class yeah. and you're going to be Mary yeah. Poppins. You're going to transform yeah. lives. You know, you're going to have yeah. all these great philosophical conversations yeah. and they just want you to pay attention to them. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. They want to talk about their finger. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. <laughs> further along. Uh -huh. I remember, you know, there's no, you can get all the mentorship in the world before you're a first year teacher, but there's nothing like actually going through it. And I remember my teacher mentors being like, okay, take your ideals, knock them down, then knock them lower, because yeah. it's the wrong standard. The, the mm -hmm. high ideals need to be there, but mm -hmm. 
but they're mm -hmm. ideals of a different measurement, a different criteria. Mm -hmm. But so Jusani, just to tell the famous story, walks into the classroom and the kids are like, father, don't bother teaching us about faith because we're all into reason. And yeah. Jusani very calmly, you know, probably inside, maybe bursting, I don't know. Uh, yeah. so, well, what, what is faith? And, and they couldn't answer what is faith. Mm -hmm. And he says, okay, what is reason? And they couldn't answer what is reason. So it's okay, before you say faith and reason are incompatible, you should know what they are. And this is the beginning of the relationship of him and his students that led to mm -hmm. reaching you and me all the way here in the mm -hmm. United States, you know, decades later. Um, so yeah, any other, any other things before we say goodbye, Amelia, about this that you could give encouragement to, or just things that you've learned from Jusani and Caron about this charism that could be helpful to all these future high school girls. And most importantly, like the mentors, because I think yeah. one of the, one of my big pet peeves is, you know, when they say, Oh, get somebody like really cool and hip to like lead the group. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I laughed too loud for that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> You know, I mean, yeah, oh. the, bigger, the bigger question is, oh, is yes, somebody willing yes. to accompany them yes, in a true 100%. way? Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. I mean, Simone, I, I just had a conversation. I'm a mentor. So part of my role is like mentoring our other our teachers who actually teach these students. And, you know, especially as they get older, you have kind of this like existential question of like, am I cool enough to teach middle yes, school? I mean, I mean, that's that's the, I mean am, yeah. I, am I really like, you know, and... I mean, I was the nerdiest, I mean, I had this question my third year of teaching, I was like, I'm the nerdiest person around, I, you know, I, I, I read for fun, and all my kids thought that was weird, <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. but I, I, I really think, and again, something I've learned from, from Jusani and the charism is, like, if your heart was given to you by God, and you are following reality, which means you are obedient to the needs in front of you that God has placed, and responsive mm -hmm. to that, like, there is freedom in what God has given you. Yep. Um, and it, is, it is really is a matter of, yeah, inviting the Holy Spirit and also like humility to be like, yes, like I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to listen to myself. Like I thought I wasn't cool. <laughs> I was like, I'm so nerdy. Like what, what, how can I engage my students? I ended up offering um, math club during lunch and I thought no one was going to so come to math. Cool in my I thought no yeah. one was going to offer math. Like, who would want to come and skip lunch to do math club with me? We would do, like, you know, patterns and, and you know, all these things and extra, like, Amazing. sprints. Amazing. And, but I was like, I want them to love math more. So I was like, you know, I'm going to take a risk and offer a piece of myself, a genuine piece of myself, you know, it's an authentic part of myself to yeah. them. Yeah. And kids showed up like it was became one of their favorite things during the day and I had students who honestly like had a very unhealthy relationship with math but mm -hmm. they just loved being able to spend that time to yeah interact with math in a way that wasn't I would say like high stakes yeah and, and it just changed but like it was it was really that offering of myself and being like okay God gave me myself <laughs> like you know yes, my eye he gave yeah for a reason yeah. and I'm really gonna take that love myself seriously enough to be like I'm going to share of my life of my experience Beautiful. and Beautiful. offer and I think that's the most important thing as a mentor is to know that like what people really want is is, is you <laughs> it's, and I don't know if that's exactly. cliche no, that's exactly but it's not saying. it's yeah. not a caricature a stereotype or an archetype at all it's actually like it's, it is it is you um and it, it I think it takes a lot to to trust your trust your own desires like Yep. I have the desire to love these women, to form these women. Like, no, no, that was given to you by God. Like, follow it. <laughs> yeah, you're just Don't, like, you're, complete, you're completely like rocking my world with all this like personal vocation, unique feminine genius, unrepeatability talk. Because I think, again, it, this is not about sitting around having bureaucratic meetings being like, well, let's get the right kind of pizza and play the really cool music and get the really cool. Yeah. No, you need, a person, <laughs> you need to like, stop, stop it. Stop it right now, church. Yeah. You need, you need a, we don't need abstract theorizing about how to appeal to the youth. What we need yeah. are grownups who are like you, you know, in your own unique accepting of yourself, being a math nerd and saying, this is what it means. Yeah. I, I was given this love for math more than even lunch shocker and I'm going to like yes. <laughs> propose myself to and it's going to resonate because it is authentic to you and you yes. were made that way and you were made that way as Ratzinger says 
mysteriously for some service in the church that is, is, is a mis- it remains a mystery to us, but there we have it. And, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And I remember a sort of similar experience of, um, you know, I didn't really tell my high school students. I taught high school for six years and, and was mm. department chair and it was, I loved it. Um, and I, I didn't really tell them about community liberation or Father Giussani or this charism because mm. the point of the charism is for me to be changed in front of them. Mm. But they mm. did actually find out that I would go to a weekly school of community, which is our, basically our weekly yeah. meetings. And they were complete, I was shocked, actually, sh- as shocked as you maybe were in the, about the math club at lunch, that they were so fascinated by the fact that I have a group of friends that I see every week that I take where we take my life seriously together, that we take our lives seriously together and judge what's real in our life. They could not believe that. They could Mm -hmm. absolutely not believe that. So uh, just another encouragement to those who are women who are considering, you know, hosting uh, high school endowed groups or who are teachers out there, educators that, Mm -hmm. you know, there, (laughs) there is this exactly what you said, the the proposal, the the tradition that we're embodying, whatever subject is we're teaching is embodied Mm -hmm. in you. And you Mm -hmm. cannot, you cannot separate that from the business of education. You have to be a part of it, which is why my friend Holly was told by Father Giussani directly, teaching is the greatest profession in the world because it's right in the middle of humanity, both yours Mm -hmm. and those you are teaching. So um, it's quite an adventure. It is. Three, and I'm telling you, three years later, I was walking down the hallway and one of my, I'm getting better at math. Like out of, like, I'm just like, I was like on the way from the bathroom. I was like, what? It's like, hold on, I'm like, who's Tani, which is my maiden name. Like, I'm doing so well at math this year. And I was like, Aww. I have never felt so honored, so honored to be known as the math lady. Yeah. Like, and this was someone who wasn't the best at behaving in class. Like, you know, yeah, it's always, it's always that kid, right? It's always that kid like, that turns our, our ideas. <laughs> yeah. But it was like three years later, like this, uh, a, a social, or this memory, if I can use a stronger word that like I embodied something hopeful and beautiful about like themselves I was like, I would have never, ever, I never prayed to God to be memorable, honestly. Yeah. Like, I didn't. But, like, yeah, I was like, oh, I, I stuck it out to my math self. <laughs> and so, yes, yeah. just, like, encouraging you all. You are enough. That's it. You are enough. You are enough. You are enough. All, with all You're, of your limitations, yeah. all of your uncoolness or whatever it else we think about ourselves, um, you, we are enough. That, that's, that's fabulous. Um, so, any final any final comment uh, before we say goodbye? This was this is so uh, delightful to talk to you. So I I actually don't want the conversation to end, but <laughs> people don't listen to really long podcasts. <laughs> podcasts <anymore. yeah. laughs> I gotta cut it short. But I I, I, I guess one of the things I also wanted to share was that you know just like you I love that you brought up obedience because the, the root of obedience is like obed to hear. Mm-hmm. to hear what's happening, to hear the spirit, to hear your heart. And we, when we talk about heart in this podcast, we're talking about it in the biblical sense, both in mm-hmm. the way that Giustani talked about it in the, both your reason and your affection. So we're mm-hmm. not saying, Oh, listen to your heart, like just your feelings. We're talking about your intelligence in accordance mm-hmm. with your feelings and the integration of those faculties of your soul into your heart, which represents the core of your being. So your whole self, uh, into, into this education. Um, but I was always so happy, Amelia, when my student, cause there's always the students who just they show up and they care and they're real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's the ones who just don't care. And you just trying to somehow awaken their, yeah. awaken their desire mm-hmm. to care. And then there are the ones who have all the right answers from the catechism, you know, and you're like, Nope, you're not alive. either. <laughs> Even if you have all the right answers, you, you are still not quite bringing your whole heart into it mm. you're you're trying to be the goody goody who has all the right answers but mm. I need you to bring your heart your needs your questions mm. seriously and to enter into this relationship mm. with, with Jesus Christ so anyway any final comments before we say goodbye no I mean if I had if I gave another final comment we'd be here for a while but <laughs> it was so wonderful <laughs> to have to be here I love talking to people about how teaching is great it's not a cliche i promise it cannot be a cliche, cliche. Yes. but yes. yes you are yes thank you so much for having me i have much gratitude it, it really also like yeah i mean i i think the conversation changed my heart to also find a sense of renewed joy in my own like day-to-day profession oh, where I am now. So oh, thank beautiful. you so much Simone you're yeah. so welcome Amelia and I want to keep you on for one more minute I just figured this might be a good chance for you to say something about Seton who who are the women listening that should know about Seton or should research oh, yeah. it yeah 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 
Uh, Seton Teaching Fellows is a generally a one-year postgraduate missionary program um, based in the Bronx in Cincinnati um, and soon to be in, in Texas near the border of Mexico. Um, we are here to kind of uh, respond to the need of alternative kind of ways or structures of Catholic education, um, basically filling a need in inner cities um, across the U.S. that don't have access to traditional Catholic education or catechesis. Um, so we have a variety of schools that are there to meet the needs of um, each city, um, but our fellows are, are catechists. They live in intentional faith-based communities, they receive formation, um, and they also teach the catechism to our students. And they also partner during the day uh, with our schools, um, whether they're public charter or they're Catholic, to also get to know the students by being in a relationship with them as like assistant teachers during the day. Um, so trying to really kind of evangelize the faith to families and students who don't really have access to that, um, either with like a solid parish or, or, or a Catholic school anymore. Um, and yeah, these are fellows who, if you want to serve Christ in a radical way and you're interested and, and, and appreciate and admire the charism of teaching or just the, the idea of the school as um, another kind of support to the family, this would be something for you. Um, we have fellows who don't have no teaching experience, who have lots of teaching experience, who are older, who are younger, who came, who were previous missionaries or not missionaries, and, and they just, yeah, are interested in our mission um, of Christ the teacher in our own way. So seatonfellows.org, I think that is. I'll, um, and, I'll link it to the podcast notes, but anybody listening who yeah. maybe this is your next step or maybe grandmas or moms with children, older adult children that they're like, wait a minute, I got to let them know about this. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Simone. All right, take care.